Hey guys, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com and in this video I'll show you how to use the new features in the Voice Info module and uh, show how we can use it in conjunction with the Spread module to create some pretty great effects using Polyphonic Unison. If you guys like this video, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. We come out with new Reactor content around once a week. So what I've built here is a really simple synth. We have a sawtooth oscillator uh, controlled by an envelope. Uh, it's also synced to a new gate press, and that's about it. Um, and then we have these two macros over here. The voice macro, which is controlling the number of voices that are played with a single key press, and the spread macro, which I'm using to spread out um, simultaneously played voices so that they play back different pitches and I'll show you what that sounds like so the voice knob controls how many voices are playing back at once and the spread knob controls how close they are in pitch All right, so we have two macros that are um, creating the spread effect here, um, the voice macro and the spread macro. So let's delete those and create them from scratch so you can see um, how they were made. So I'll create a new macro called voices, and the centerpiece of that is going to be a voice info module, which has two new inputs uh, with Reactor 5.92, minimum and maximum. And these control the minimum number of simultaneous voices and the maximum number of simultaneous voices or unison voices. So what that means is if you have the minimum number of voices set to four, whenever you play any note, it's going to set four voices to that note. So if you set the minimum and maximum values um, to the same number, then it should control um, the number of voices that are press, uh, played with a single note press. However, this does actually uh, not work quite properly. And uh, the reason for that is um, the way that they're connected right now, when we turn the knob, we're going to send an event to the minimum input first and to the maximum input second. And the minimum value um, arriving first, if it's higher than the previously set maximum value, will not set and I'll show you um, that right now. So we have both values set to 1. Uh, make sure you set the spread to 0 inside the instrument properties, the function tab here. But notice when we turn up the voice knob, um, the minimum voice uh, does not change. Again, because it's being set first and it cannot be larger than the maximum value. So what we're going to do is use an order module to set the maximum value before setting the minimum value. And this should work fine. So we have the number of voices set to four. Now whenever we press any note, we should see four of those notes arrive at the note pitch module and you can see that's working. So now we just need to create another signal to add to the note pitch right here that will um, spread out our voices um, so that the pitches are a little different giving us the kind of chorus or flangey effect we were getting before. So a really basic way to do that is to use a spread module connected basically to a knob just like this. Very simple. Unfortunately there are a few flaws with this in my opinion. Um, it works pretty well for simple applications. But it actually has a few undesirable effects. So right now with two voices, for example, um, we're getting outputs of 0 and 0 0.5 as our spread values that are um, being added to our note pitch. 
which works okay for a pitch, but imagine if we were trying to spread out um, two voices in stereo. Um, so a value of 0 for one voice and a value of 0.5 for another would have one of the voices in the center and the other one um, to the right or left. I, forget, I think it's to the right. Um, <clears throat> and that's kind of undesirable if you are trying to spread two voices out. Obviously you want one in the right and one on the left, not one in the center and one on one of the other sides. And another problem that can occur is our voices can get greater than 1 um, coming out of this spread value here. Even if the input is equal to 1, the output could be greater than that. Um, and so if we set you know, spread value to 1 and the voices to 5, we're going to get some values equal to 2 and negative 2, which um, don't really make any sense as panning values. So we also want a way to, if we have the spread knob, set all the way to 1, we want to spread the values equally between negative 1 and 1. Um, so the way that it works by default is the more voices you have, the larger val the values get. And we really don't want that to happen. So I'm going to create a new macro. We'll name this one spread. It's going to take a voices input from the voices macro. And we'll use it to control the stereo pan and the um, pitch spread of our simple synth here. So this is a macro that I made with a lot of trial and error, and we're going to fix both of the problems I just outlined. We're going to start by making sure we limit the output of the spread to be um, the maximum value of the spread is going to be whatever the value of our spread knob is here. So if you want to have a value greater than 1, um, you just set the knob to uh, have a maximum value greater than 1, and that'll work just fine. So we're going to take the number of voices, subtract 1, and divide our knob value over that, and then multiply by 2. And this is going to give us our um, spread value limited to an, an amount such that we're not um, getting an output larger than the knob value. And we can connect this directly to the pan module we made before. It might appear not to work. The values coming out of it are going to get greater than 1. Uh, but once we start playing some notes, you'll see that those um, values never actually occur on an active voice. One problem we still have is that the voice dis distribution is still a little awkward when using an even number of voices. Things get distributed more towards the positive side of things than towards the negative because one of the values gets set to zero, which I don't really like. I'd rather have things equally positive and equally negative with um, no z value set to zero. So I'm just going to create a quick fix for that. So we can do that using a modulo module, um, which basically does a division with a remainder function. So if we modulo by 2 and we take the remainder, um, the remainder is going to be 0 if the num input was even, and it's going to be 1 if the input was odd. So we can use that to control a selector module. And what we're going to want to do is just sub subtract a small value from our um, output if we have an even number of voices. And we've already calculated that value, actually. It's the output of our division from earlier um, in the same macro right here. We can lead that into the zero input of the selector. And this way, we'll be subtracting that value when we have an even number of voices, and we'll be subtracting 0 when we have an odd number of voices. <coughs> so that just about wraps things up. Um, you can use spread on pretty much any parameter. It definitely is fun to get a little creative with. Um, I was making a synth yesterday where you could create spread on 
uh, maybe five or ten different parameters and it really gave you a lot of options for making really fat wide signals um, so yeah this is one of my favorite new features in reactor 5.2 uh, I'm pretty happy about it and I'll be releasing some more work with it soon <laughs> All right, once again, this is Salamander Anagram with ReactorTutorials.com. Hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial, and I'll be back with a new one next week. Thanks for watching.